<clears throat> Hi, it's Tuesday the 8th of September and I am continuing to read through the book of Acts, the sequel to Luke's gospel, same narrator who actually tells some stories in first person, so he would seem to be there, whoever he is, I'll call him Luke, uh, as the early church figures out who it is and there's teachings and miracles and dissension from within and there's conflict from without a lot of time is spent with uh with paul um as he goes to the mediterranean and as we're getting closer to the end of the book of acts paul has come back to jerusalem most recently and you may recall that he is arrested and he is treated rather harshly um until it's made clear that he is a Roman citizen, and that makes the Tribune back off a little bit. In fact, release him and call the uh, the high court um, from the temple together to actually figure out what it is that Paul has done um, that is worthy of arrest. And that's where we'll pick it up today. And um, the point of this for me is to is to wonder. I, I truly believe that the Word of God is dynamic and it comes to us as we are, where we are, in our time, in our space, and we can, we can hear it as we, as we listen to Scripture. Um, it helps, I think, to read it out, out loud and it helps to push back at it, to wonder, why is it saying that? Why would Luke, the author, write it this way? <clears throat> why would this event have happened like that? And... and you know, do I trust the narrator? Do I trust the story? And if I don't, what's the problem? And to push back at it and recognize um, similarities to our times and differences. And, but in all of that, particularly when it's in discussion with another person, I find the word of God emerges. I hear it as we talk and wonder together. So I encourage you to to not agree with me, but to wonder as I wonder. And if there's someone you can talk to and wonder together, so much the better. I think that's where we figure these things out. That's where this, this word becomes so evident to us. Um, anyway, enough of my preamble. We're in chapter 23, verses 1 through 11. And as I said, Paul has been uh, arrested in Jerusalem. Now he's been released. Um, the high priest have been called. And now <clears throat> Paul is going to be in front of those high priests. So here we go. While Paul was looking intently at the council, he said, Brothers, up to this day I have lived my life with a clear conscience before God. And then the high priest Ananias ordered those standing near him to strike him on the mouth. At this Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Are you sitting there to judge me according to the law, and yet in violation of the law, you order me to be struck? Those standing nearby said, Do you dare to insult God's high priest? And Paul said, I did not realize, brothers, that he was high priest. For it is written, You shall not speak evil of a leader of your people. When Paul noticed that some were Sadducees and others were Pharisees, he called out in the council, Brothers, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. I am on trial concerning the hope of the resurrection of the dead. And when he said this, a dissension began between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. The Sadducees say there is no resurrection, or angel, or spirit, but the Pharisees acknowledge all three. And then a great clamor arose, and certain scribes of the Pharisees' group stood up and contended, we find nothing wrong with this man. What if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him? When the dissension became violent, the tribune, fearing that they would tear Paul to pieces, ordered the soldiers to go down, take him by force, and bring him into the barracks. That night the Lord stood near him and said, Keep up your courage, for just as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must bear witness also in Rome. So, um, again, a beautifully told story um, and, and <laughs> high drama. Um, we, we, we have Paul just giving it right back. I mean, I know I read it that way, but, but the words indicate it that way. Um, Paul is not taking this easily. He speaks back and he is sarcastic. How dare you insult the high priest? Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize he was a high priest because... 
because he's just broken one of the rules. And if he's a high priest, he should know you shall not speak evil of a leader of your people. And clearly that's all that I am. Um, you know, it's kind of like parliamentary uh, law in Canada anyway, where you always uh, refer to your opponent as your learned colleague, uh, never as uh, the lying rat that he may be. Um, <laughs> So uh, Paul, Paul gives it back with sarcasm and insight. Now you may recall that when Jesus was before Ananias, um, Jesus played a very different kind of role. He was passive. Um, you know, when asked if he was the son of God, he says, that's, that's what you say. Um, Paul is doing this differently. So, uh, and, and there's a little less drama granted, um, but, but he's doing it differently. When being questioned, he's fighting back. Um, and and <laughs> I love, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Uh, it's a lovely insult. I may start using that in my vernacular now. Um, anyway, um, so, so Paul's giving it back a little, a little harder. And um, I, I wonder why that is. Um, I think I think perhaps this is a wonderful, in a sense, response to to, to those who, upon hearing the gospel story, uh, Jesus going through trial and and ultimately going to crucifixion, saying, "Why didn't he fight back? Why wasn't he harsher?" I mean, I mean, he had no problem um, crying out against the, the the hypocrites and and the the, the Pharisees as hypocrites. Um, Earlier on, why didn't he fight back? Well, here's Paul who was fighting back. And, well, spoiler alert, uh, it's not going to work out very well for Paul either. Um, so um, it, it speaks something to, to the inevitability of this, perhaps. It also lets us know that there, um, that there are different ways to go through the process. So, yes, there is, there is the passive, but there is also the one that, 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 that fights back and speaks back. And that's exactly what Paul's doing here. In fact, Paul, with his political um, insight, so, so he's raised a Pharisee, but, he, but he's played the game very well, which is how he, he rose to some prominence uh, as a Pharisee and, and went out after Christians. Uh, he knows how to play the game. He knows, he knows how the politics work. He knows uh, how, how to divide the crowd, which is exactly what he does. He looks and he realizes we have Sadducees and we have Pharisees. So I'm going to identify myself as a Pharisee, which is fair he is. And I am going to raise the one point that will divide this group right away. I am here. I'm on trial concerning the hope of the resurrection, which is a sticking point for Sadducees and Pharisees. They don't agree on resurrection. Sadducees are not believers in, in the resurrection. They're not, they're not afterlife folk, particularly. Um, but the Pharisees are. So he raises that and then puts them at each other's throats. Um, now they're still angry at him, but now they're angry at each other. And he's got a group, of course, who will side with their own, the Pharisee, but also be reminded that the very reason he's on trial is for speaking of resurrection. And they're not anti-resurrection, they're pro, which reminds them that the Sadducees aren't. And it's masterful. So I wonder, why does Luke put that in there? Uh, perhaps because that's what happened. <laughs> um, for me, Paul has been, been been called into this ministry. That's been pretty clear by Paul's own testimony and the way things have moved. He's had visions. He's had uh, an experience of the risen Christ who, who told him there were things for him to do. And this is one of the things for him to do. And, and so he's using his skills. Now, He's not cheating, he's not lying, but he is good at playing the game of politics, and so he is using those skills. And so often um, in church and in church communities, we talk about gifts, and the gifts are, you know, well, I'm really, really good at, 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 at making soup, and I'm very good at, at writing notes, and I am good at, we, there's a, a whole bunch of these lovely churchy type things, but sometimes our gifts are also the ability to navigate community politics. I don't mean to, to create dissension, which Paul does here in this situation, but there are a variety of gifts. I, I, I think of the number of times that I have had um, lawyers in my congregation and in my confidence who will be sort of self-deprecating, oh, well, you know, 
I'm a lawyer. Do you know what we're like? I'm like? Yes, I know what you're like. You understand how the law works, and you work for for your client and for the for 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 the side that you represent, and you understand that that's a gift, and we need that. And that's really what Paul brings to this. Paul has an insight, and and he has a commitment, and he is using his gifts here. I think it's important um, for all of us to recognize our gifts and to not denigrate our gifts simply because social media has memes that mock the way we do things or, or, or who we are, or that traditionally we've always sort of rolled our eyes at whatever that gift may be or that profession or that ability may be. Um, Paul is being uh, very clever in this, and he is guided by God in this, so... Um, yeah, I, I don't think that I want to make a career of going around and dividing groups against each other. But in doing this, Paul is also helping them recognize their own hypocrisy. Without calling them hypocrites, he is showing them to be hypocrites. Um, I don't know. There's something in that for me. Or maybe I just really admire um, clever speakers um, and master manipulators. I don't know. Uh, but I, I, I appreciate that. Um, so th the other piece I think that jumps out for me, um, the, 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 the Tribune fearing for Paul and the craziness that's now ensuing grabs Paul, takes him back to the barracks, basically. So he sort of got him back and lock up. And that night, the Lord appears to Paul and says, keep up your courage. For just as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must bear witness also in Rome. Now, on one hand, this is um, a harbinger of what's going to happen. So we know that Paul is now going to move from Jerusalem to Rome. Um, fine, that's letting it. That's lovely literary device. Got it. Um, but I'm going to assume that it happened. That in fact. Uh, Paul had had a vision, a sense of God's presence that said, as you testify for me in Jerusalem, you must also bear witness to me in Rome. But for me in 2020, Jerusalem is, is, the, is, is the religious center. <clears throat> it is the place of, 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 of Paul's faith. Rome is the, is, is the center of the empire. This is the political center. When I hear these words, I, I wonder, ha, has Luke included these words not just to move along the narrative, but also to remind us that our faith needs to be shared within our religious communities, but it must also affect the way we live our lives politically. For me, I, I, that doesn't mean that I need to make my government um, Christian like me. I'm, I can live quite well. Uh, in, in, in a country that is uh, atheist or is uh, Muslim or is Catholic or whatever it is, I, I don't need to make it I don't need to make it subscribe to my rituals and my readings and my understandings, but I do need my faith to motivate me and the way that I live politically. So my faith does affect the way that I vote. It does affect the way that I write to my members of parliament or members of provincial parliament or to my city government. And I do write to these folk. And I don't necessarily write and say, and God says this, and you are a sinner for not, for not supporting the homeless. It's not that. But my faith cannot only exist within the confines of my church community. It, it also needs to, to be lived out in in the political forum, in the public forum. Not to, for me, not to win converts, but to make for a, a just society, um, a loving community. Uh, so I, I have to. I have to testify in Jerusalem. I have to testify at my church. I also have to bear witness in Rome. I also have to let my faith move me to act for the better of the community, the community outside of my church. And I'm not saying that's unique um, to the church, but there are many faith communities, Christian ones included, that are insulated and, and they believe in that. 
right? They believe in keeping to themselves. Um, let the outside world does, does what it does. We will remain holy and supportive of all those who come in. And, and we're, we'll let people come in, but we're not looking out. We are staying focused on our community. And I can respect that. It's not my choice. And when I read this line, keep up your courage for just as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must bear witness also in Rome. I wonder if I'm not hearing God speak through Paul, speak through the author Luke, to remind me that it's not all about my community, that my community has a responsibility to the whole larger network of, of humanity. When I testify in Jerusalem, I must also witness in Rome. I don't know. That's, that's what's got me wondering. And so I'm going to invite you to spend some time wondering um, on your own, if you must, on the phone with somebody, face-to-face, -face, through a Zoom call, whatever it takes, I do uh, invite you to wonder about this uh, with another person and listen to them. Let them change your mind even as you may change their mind. And together, I do truly believe you have the best chance of hearing what God is saying in this moment. With that in mind, let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for... For the stories that inspire, the stories that challenge, we thank you for our ability to hear and to wonder, to listen to others. We thank you, God, for your word spoken all around us in creation, in scripture, in conversation with others, and also quietly privately in our own hearts. God, may we not only listen, but may we respond. We pray through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. So friends, that's it for me today. Um, please have, have a good day. Um, live out your day uh, knowing that you're blessed and live out your day knowing that you are a blessing to all those that you encounter. God bless you. See you tomorrow.